mic test, mic test. So in case uh, anyone can hear, just type inside the chat before I begin the webinar. Just want to test out. Hello, mic test. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining uh, today's webinar. So actually, today's we webinar right, is a theme uh, that we surround about women and uh, gender diversity in business to celebrate the International Women's Day. So it's the first webinar that we come up with this theme because actually we also want to talk about ESG investing. Okay, so what we'll be discussing today, first of all, we we'll cover about International Women Day. For all, we'll discuss on two different uh, women who are actually quite successful in their career. Subsequently, we'll introduce you why it's actually ESG investing and actually why gender diversity matter. Lastly, we'll talk about some ETF that is actually into ESG gym theme. So International Women's Day, everyone knows is actually uh, what you call Chinese, you call Samba Fu Nishie. So it's actually a global day to celebrate social, economic, cultural, and political achievement of women. The first gathering in, is held in 1911. It's, it's actually bringing attention to actually gender parity and also women's rights. So there's, uh, for this actually International Women's Day, right, right, there's three central beliefs. One is actually identify, celebrate, and increasing visibility of women achievement that can help to fought equality. Next one will be strategic uh, collaboration based on a uh, fun foundation of shared purpose, trust, and appreciation that uh, can impact positive change for women. And it's also a worldwide awareness raising via minimum a uh, meaningful narrative resources and activity to help combat. So actually all this is about talking about the achievement of the woman because in the past we will say that guys actually tend to be in stronger but you can see actually women that can, uh, can be also equally successful in their career and what they can actually bring up. So next we will actually discuss about one successful Mary Barrow. So it's actually the current chairman and the CEO of General Moto is, and she is also elected to the board of uh, what's Disney in 2017 and she's one of, I would say that one of the female uh, chairman and CEO of the uh, motor industry, electric uh, vehicle industry because most of the vehicle industry you can see actually is dominated by male especially in the in, uh, engineering field. So first of all she actually started as a student uh, in the General Motor Institute in 1980s Subsequently, she graduated with a Bachelor of Science in the degree in the electrical engineering. And she got uh, her own Master of Business Administration in the 1990s. Subsequently, she actually worked uh, in the company with uh, various roles. She worked as a VP with a Global Human Resource. Then she also worked as a VP in Global Manufacturing Engineering Brand Manager. So you can see that she actually played out a role in all the different parts of the company and subsequently she was elected to become the CEO because of in the 2014 because of her capability so you can see actually she are also quite successful and gained the respect and currently she is still the chairman and was elected to the chairman in 2016. So actually from her so-called success story you can actually see uh, some learning lesson leadership lesson that we can actually learn from her. So first of all, she come up with three uh, a few different points about leadership. So actually, uh, leadership is regardless male or female, we believe that there's uh, equality. So first of all, they believe that leadership should always listen. So in case you are interested to read up more about this uh, points, right, leadership learning lesson, right, you can go to the following link. But for me, I will just uh, highlight some of the key points from the uh, a view. So success is always about teamwork. So it's okay to admit that you do not know, but it's, and it's okay to ask for help. And it's more than okay to listen to people. So 
what it means that is uh, for a team to be actually successful, right? you need to listen to each other and will, willing to uh, so-called accept help from others. Because for us, it's like as a leadership, we may not be uh, so-called expert in every single thing because as a, especially in the CEO, I don't think she is that uh, can know every single thing that's happening in the company. So what she do, she will actually help to listen. So this is something that is very unique. Next, they also, next point from her is actually leadership care. So how you actually deal with uh, mistakes that will largely de uh, determine how you'll be judged. So sometimes leadership, right, you need to actually care about all your uh, staff that is under you. You need to understand what uh, kind of problem they are facing and also what kind of help they need in their career. Next, they actually got good leadership should actually uh, leaders to inspire at the end of the day because all business right is about people first let's say if you actually really take care of your staff right actually they will actually if the staff is feel they are being well taken care of they'll work harder for the company so that's why for business wise for a long lasting business you need to have actually uh, staff that are actually willing to work for you and work hard together with you and also leadership works so if you really want to change the world, you need more than talent because uh, a lot, I would say that there's a difference between boss and leaders. So one thing is that for leaders, right, he will lead uh, what you call also lead by example sometimes because it will help you to, uh, in some issue, right, will actually help you to do and it's able to do. So you also need to do the hard work and hard work big talents if the talents don't work hard. So it's quite interesting. I would say that uh, I can't get, uh, may not be able to explain the whole essence of this article. You can find out more in the following link. <coughs> so some of her personal achievement. So she is uh, in uh, Phoebe, one of the most powerful woman lady listed number six in 2020. Then in the Fortune, uh, most um, powerful woman list is uh, listed number two and company achievement. So in the equality leap uh, 2019 USD reports, right, uh, GM actually finished first out of the 200 company leading in the way in gender equality. And in the just 100 ranking based on the public attitude to corporate behavior, right, G, uh, General Motors also finished uh, first in the automotive sector for the third straight year in 2019. And it's also finished in the number 18 out of the 200, uh, 922 company. And also uh, General Motor is also included in the Bloomberg Gender Equality Index for Transparency in the Gender Reporting and Advancement of the Women Equality. So actually, uh, there are some interesting story about her that, for example, actually, uh, when she come, uh, come to work as a human resource manager, right, she actually, remove the because there's always in the past there's guideline to uh, so-called on how they dress uh, for work but for her she said that actually she trusts her worker so she removed this so she one point from her is that quite interesting is that she believed that if you can't even trust the work the staff that are working for you right then in that case then why are they in this company <laughs> So that's why she actually removes uh, revised quite a lot of policies in the company making it more flexible. <coughs> next thing will be uh, next woman, success woman will be sharing is actually uh, uh, Lucy Peng. I think there's uh, some issue. Uh, it's not, it's to be actually L-U-C-Y. So it's actually a co-founder of Alibaba. So what she started off, before she actually she started off, she actually uh, was a so-called a lecturer in the Zhejiang University of Finance and Economics. So subsequently, she joined Jack Ma in the founding of Alibaba. When she started in the first role in the, actually in the Alibaba, she was actually also the human resource uh, officer or managing the human uh, capital in the Alibaba. And subsequently, she actually become the CEO of Alipay and also CEO of Alibaba Small and Microfinance Services. Unfortunately, Ali, uh, so-called M Financial may not be listing now, but you can see actually she started kick off all this uh, M Financial role in the 
Bus City. And she is also the CEO of the Lazada. So uh, during her role, so right, there's some learning lessons. For her, she is actually quite finished, passionate uh, in, I would say that, helping people. So all, all her stuff actually give her quite com good comments that she actually is really willing to help people. So she actually uh, was managing the HR department of Alibaba. <coughs> so you can see actually Alibaba started from a very small company and she grew up to almost uh, over 20, 30,000 of staff. So everyone actually know her well for her actually in the human resources. And she's also very uh, dedicated from her job because from her, what you know that she used to be a lecturer and because of her dedication in the job, she put in all her effort to help uh, the company. So you have actually gone earn her amazing and respect for the senior manager. And she has actually moved role out from human resource to Alipay and leading Lazada. And at one point of stage, right, she was almost uh, so-called becoming uh, proposed as one of the CEO uh, of to take over Jack Ma after he uh, so-called going for retirement. However, this one really, really doesn't take place. So some of her achievements, she helped to actually build Alibaba HR department from scratch because when you are starting out a company, right, it's not easy to so-called build something from the scratch. You have to set up a lot of policy and a lot of stuff you have to manage on your own. So she was also actually, okay, this, uh, I think that. So for her uh, personal achievement, she was uh, named the number 11 in the Phoebe uh, Most Powerful Woman in 2015 and 35 in the Fortune Most Powerful Woman in 2016. For her, okay, as for her, right, she tend to be a more so-called a more silent worker. She worked very hard and more delicate. However, in outside uh, personal life, she don't really uh, so-called comment so much on the company. But out of that, you can see actually she's really quite capable to become part of the founder and also manage uh, become the so-called CEO of Alipay. So as a company achievement out of the Alibaba 18 founder, right, actually six of them are women. <coughs> and she belongs to one of them. And also she helped out in the Alibaba IPO in 2014. And at that point of stage, right, it's actually one of the largest IPO at all time. And also Alipay, she, because being the first CEO, she helped Alipay to actually grow very, uh, over time. And now Alipay, I would say that in China, is one of the most widely uh, used online payment services and in the uh, so-called and in China with uh, more than 100 million daily transactions and more than 120 million active users. And NRIX has also helped to establish China as a world leader in the digital transaction. You can see throughout the whole world, right, China is actually going towards a cashless society and, and, and also WeChat, right, they are one of the leaders leading forward for all this uh, digital transaction. Okay, now I think we will come back to the main topic, what is actually really about ESG. Anyone want to make a guess uh, what does ESG stand for? Maybe you can type inside chat group before I continue. So actually, uh, ESG investing, right, there is actually three components. One is environmental, one is social, and one is governance. So, so it's actually a strategy to actually help you to put money into investing in companies that strive to make the world a better place. Because a lot of us, we, we have been actually doing investing, and we may not know that actually some company in our daily routine, they actually start to really press this ESG already. So unless you actually read out the financial report, you can see actually like, for example, later I'll show you about Capital Land. Capital Land has actually done their parts in, into the ESG. They try to actually uh, in, do what they can in the ESG. Later we'll cast, uh, go through some of their policy. So you can see that a lot of companies, right, they are already growing towards ESG. 
So for if you are invest, investing in ESG, right, it's actually interested in the impact of your investment and role of your asset that can help to promote the global issue. So most of us will know about ESG is just as uh, global warming, but in reality, right, ESG go much more than uh, global warming because global warming is just a small portion of environmental. Other, there are also much more issue than this uh, environmental issue. I'll say that uh, there's uh, no one comprehensive list of, uh, of ESG factor because it's from different uh, point people look right when they are looking at ESG investing, uh, there's quite a lot of different factors and there's no comprehensive list of ESG. So for my uh, this time round, I will use the CFA uh, ESG factors as a guideline. And also ESG, right, is actually often interlinked. It can be actually quite uh, challenging to classify an uh, ESG issue because all these are not a uh, monetary number that you can tell, oh, this one will cause this amount of damage because all these are actually more of uh, quality than quantitative numbers. So we just now share that ESG factor, right, often can be measured, like can measure how much pollution that is uh, coming out. But in reality, it's very difficult to assign them a monetary uh, value. Let's say you just talk about uh, this, uh, I would say the refinery, you can see that actually re do a lot of uh, release of uh, maybe sulfur dioxide or this into the environment. In short term wise, you know that actually some of these uh, harmful gas they do is actually causing global warming and global warming right, will have a lot of impact in our life because when uh, let's say all the company they don't do in terms of treatment of their uh, release of the harmful gas too, then all this will actually start to cause global warming. And global warming right, indirectly will actually cause even more effect. Like for example, global warming will cause heat to rise and ice uh, at the North and the South Pole will actually start to melt. However, you know, if you notice, right, it's much more than this. You can see that actually in the, uh, I'll say that in the recent year, you can see that actually global warming also caused a lot of human uh, natural disaster and the natural disaster are getting, uh, I'll say that much stronger. You can see the hurricane, all this are getting much stronger because partly due to the global warming effect. And also this harmful gas, right? If you actually go into the air, they mix up with the rain. It cause actually acidity, acidity rain. So this one, when they start to rain down, right? When they actually rain down, and they, if there's crop or this, they cause damage to the crop and buildings. Also back to the infrastructure of this. Uh, uh, I'll say that maybe we say that gas manufacturing industry they damage some of these metal funds. So that's why you can see actually global warming, right? We just simply talk about number. They can measure the. Uh, number of uh, gas emitted, but in reality, right, the, the effect, chain effect behind it is actually much more, and it's really, really hard for us to put a monetary value. That's why a lot of people, when, uh, I'll say that in the past, a lot of people, when they are doing investing, oh, they think uh, it's just global warming effect, but in reality, you can see all this harmful effect, right, they have a chain effect down the road and can actually come back to really harm the uh, so called the plant or this also. So when you are talking about environmental, right, you can talk about conservative or the natural world. So just now I'm talking about climate change and also carbon emission. So you can see actually, uh, there's actually an agreement, Paris Agreement, that we want to try to reduce all these harmful emission. And also when there's, so companies and countries, right, will start to come up with policies to target all these uh, industry that are actually releasing a lot of uh, carbon and also harmful gas into the environment. So if company do not <clears throat> actually practice ESG, right, they can actually be uh, so-called being fined or this tax also. Also, we also talk about air pollution and water pollution because of this harmful gas, it can become acid rain and indirectly harm when it affect our water also. And biodiversity, and also deforestation, energy efficient, waste management, and water scarcity. So you can see actually the chain effect of all these uh, ESG, uh, just releasing of harmful gas in the whole, into the air, right, can actually cause a lot of chain effect to all these different factors. So this is just an example. 
other than environment, you talk about uh, social. So you consider the people and uh, relationship. So social, you talk about uh, customer satisfaction. So what is the customer, uh, whether they are actually happy with the product? Because when they actually consumer, if they buy a product and they are satisfied, they will continue to actually come back. If they are not, most likely they will switch to other products and there's no uh, product loyalty. And also talk about data protection and privacy. So I'll say that there's quite a lot of uh, data breach over the past few years, especially you can see a lot of data actually stored online and all these are causing uh, uh, issues because they're of the cybersecurity system in place because most of them actually using may not be using updated cybersecurity. So you can see just recently last week, I think uh, Chris Fryer or what we known as SIA has already data breached. So you can see all these effects like when consumers are uh, facing all this, right, they feel their data being hacked, right? they may not be actually coming back to the company and be worried on their data store on this. Then gen uh, gender and diversity uh, is one of the things that we'll actually discuss later. We'll talk more about it subsequently. And also employee engagement. If you actually em engage your uh, employee more regularly, actually all this, you'll be uh, more willing to stay there, know what is their needs and also help them to progress in their career. Community relation, for example, doing social work, giving back, uh, from corporate giving back to the society. Uh, human rights, uh, Singapore-wise, we are not so concerned about human rights. But in other parts of the world, you know that actually human rights, especially you see uh, in country like Myanmar, all this, right, you can see actually the human rights is actually an important issue. In case there's no protection of humans, right, you can see like, for example, what the military has been doing to the humans, right, actually, companies are also worried about investing in these countries and they start to pull back their investment. So this will actually can also, in, if uh, I'll say that uh, this also can actually indirectly affect companies. So you can see actually like shares like uh, ETC and also Yoma, right? They actually their share price has been affected as such. And also labor standards. So labor standard, I think uh, we talk about uh, also talk about whether there's actually child labor and also such issue. Governance is actually the standard for running a company. This why I would say that most company when list up company they have to go through a uh, board composition. They actually want to have uh, some sort of uh, independent director on board also. They also come up with an uh, audit committee to see whether the company and the management are doing their job. Then in governance, in bribery and corruption, I'll say that in some countries, right, the corruption and bribery case is really high. And this one, for business-wise, they want to work if this, in this country, they have to actually continue pay bribery and corruption. Uh, so this may not be actually uh, good for these companies also. Then also talk about executive compensation and lobbying, uh, political contribution, also whistleblow scheme. So for governors, uh, company also need to consider all this kind of policy. Uh, so now we talk about, yes, coming back to ESG after talking about all these factors. So all these factors, right, is very, I would say that it's very hard for us to put, oh, let's say a person actually corrupt, how what is the damage? Because maybe the person is just corrupting uh, maybe 1 million, but back end, right, you can see actually the company reputation and right, it's actually re really affected. So you can see actually when a company reputation is being affected, right, the, I would say that the damage right, is much more than just well number of 1 million. It can be actually consumer are losing uh, confidence in this company. End up the effect, maybe a 10 million, 20 million. We also very hard to put a number just to justify. So actually according to MSCI, I think MSCI is actually a, you all know about uh, investing index, right? They have been actually one of the leading MS. You see that there's a lot MSCI -like index of different country. So according to that, one of their global institution investor survey, they do a survey of over 200 asset uh, owner institute with asset total of 18 trillion. So you can see this one is actually a quite a uh, huge number. So million, billion, trillion. So over the three quarters of the investor right, actually have increased ESG investment 
uh, significantly or moderate in response to COVID-19. So you can see actually over COVID-19, people start to realize the importance of ESG investing. And investing. Although for retail-wise, they may not know so much about this. So they put a lot of focus on all this. And for large industry managing over 200 billion asset, right? This one is up to 90%. So you can see for institute player, they are actually really looking into ESG. Also, 31 of the largest institute investors say that climate change will have it will be one of their most uh, I would say that one of the main focus or most impact on the way that actually do investing over going forward over the next three to five years. So what this means, you also look into because you know that actually a lot of government they are looking into policies like for example China is going to going towards to uh, carbon new, uh, neutral by 2060 and also see that other country like Singapore and other country, right, they are going to EV cars. You want to actually focus a lot. All these are, uh, policies, right, is actually uh, taking, taking about uh, climate change. So you can see uh, over all these large institutes, right, they put focus into all this ESG, especially into the uh, climate change. So what does this mean? You can see actually uh, from government, there's actually uh, so-called, they are uh, talking about climate change, they are implementing policy and for institute investor right also going to so for all these companies that are focusing on ESG especially in climate change right will have the biggest impact and also you see that uh, in the Trump era they actually pull out the Paris uh, agreement however for Joe Biden right you know that during his uh, I'll say that president election period right talk about a lot about uh, climate change and also renewable energy and clean energy. So you can see actually over the past, I would say that past six months, right, you can see actually there's a lot of interest in all this uh, renewable clean energy and their investment has been also uh, increased also. So following the, the disruptive technology, right, they also believe that uh, AI also uh, account for about one fifth of investment and they also believe that increasing uh, sophisticating of ESG measurement will have the greatest impact. So you can see, actually, institute player, they are really going, looking into ESG investment. And ESG investment, you see, especially in terms of climate change, you have seen them growing over the past six months. So this is the link later, you can take a look. Then they also, uh, another Moody is also talking about ESG team investments. So in doing 2020, right, they actually see that very strong performance in terms of this ESG. And they also believe that ESG will be a key driver of this industrial organic service under the AUM. So through the COVID-19, they actually experienced all this experience. They believe that they help investors to worry about uh, ESG investing, giving up returns because in the past, we always talk about ESG return, or oh, lower return. But in reality, it may not be. Because let's say a company, uh, maybe you just talk about oil company, if they actually be practicing ESG, like they control all this uh, oil drilling also, maybe, right. So actually, they may not be uh, doing much. But in case, let's say we heard about BP or uh, oil spill. So you can see that the impact and the uh, fine they have to pay, right, is very huge as compared to if they actually implement very strict control. So that's why you can see the, I think for them, I can't remember the oil spill that cost them billions of dollars of fines. So you can see actually the impact, right? Whether they actually practice ESG, right? So, and also as compared to the damage after that. So sometimes, just like I mentioned, for this uh, ESG, right? It's very hard to put a monetary value until something happened. And also ESG and incorporate of ESG consideration into our investment analysis and also product cons uh, construction. So you can see for this, Moody is also one of the leading, uh, I'll say that they are well known for uh, towards the bonds rating of the bonds. So they are do also one of the asset manager, right? You can see actually they are doing all this uh, into ESG consideration. So lastly, we'll come uh, to the gender diversity. So we talk about uh, what is actually gender diversity. So it's actually a fair represent of people of different gender. So what we always common know is actually uh, equal ratio of men and women. 
but in reality it's not so simple because some industry they may not be suitable but in other industry they may be especially in like so for example just talk about construction they'll be tend to be have a lower ratio of uh, women because of the nature of the work so we actually for gender diversity right, we want to actually promote gender diversity in field that trend that traditionally has been dominated by men like for example computing engineering medic medicine and science so actually there are some benefit of uh, gender diversity so like for example you talk about uh, first of all if you actually put women into the equation there will be actually wider talent pool because uh, i'll say that sometimes in certain males maybe you feel some restriction you may not get all the talent that required so by actually including women into the pool right you can actually have a wider view also wider uh, talent pool to choose from and also if you talk about let's jump to go back to gdp so let's say you have in a country that has just male working so the the gdp right will be just focused on the male alone but however if actually women start to go uh, into society working right can see actually with a not larger population the gdp growth will also be actually increasing also so they actually, this is how actually wider pool of talent come. Also, uh, I'll say that woman wise, uh, for guys, right, most of us are tend to be a bit, what I call a uh, two thing. Sometimes we may not notice some stuff. So on, uh, look at the different point of anger. So from with a woman, right, it can actually help us to provide a different perspective. So within a team, right, is sometimes you have male and female, they can actually help to provide different idea on how to solve, resolve the issue, and you can work together. Also, for our cons, uh, as a, uh, I'll say that as a service industry, sometimes because if you are just focusing on male, but sometimes we also need to focus on what our client because we also have female clients in every, even in cars, right? Female also drive cars. So it's with uh, actually a gender diversity, right? They help to provide, uh, we can see it, or what is everyone looking out for in a vehicle. So with uh, gender diversity, help us to do that. Also, just now you talk about uh, recruitment and reputation because uh, with a woman, sometimes actually help to a uh, company actually improve in their uh, actually in their reputation. Also, greater profitability. So this one is uh, quite interesting. There are some studies they show that actually uh, some women uh, right they actually being a CEO they actually help the company to grow much faster. So we will be going that into that. So actually, uh. They did a study on this company, uh, McKinson, say, has carried out a series of articles on gender diversity. They did a study in 2015, why diversity matter, 2018, during true diversity, and 2020, uh, how inclusion matters. So throughout the year, they actually tried to see how uh, gender diversity, what is the impact on that on the company profitability and also business. So their latest analysis reaffirmed that strong business case for actually both gender diversity and ethics and culture diversity in corporate leadership. So the they did is that uh what they conclude is actually the more diversity a company is now are more likely to outperform a company that's with less diversity on in terms of actually profitability. So you can see uh for them they have a strong uh case. So they did a comparison, uh, 2014, and 2019. So in this case, right, you can see that actually company with a wider range of gender diversity, right, they tend to perform as compared to companies that they do not have a gender diversity. And latest is uh, financial impact outperformance is actually around 25%. So you can see actually your gender benefit of the gender diversity, right? It can actually help a company to perform, outperform. And in terms of investor, right, we're also looking for companies that are also able to give us better returns. The next thing is they also did uh, ethics uh, diversity. Uh, right, uh, so you can see actually they also make a difference because of this diversity, right? You can see actually the top quota right, actually outperformed by 36% as compared to the bottom. So you can see all this diversity, right? Was very uh, help to actually outperform. So company with actually uh, more than 30% of their women executives are more likely to outperform with company where 
the percentage range from around 10 to 30 percent and in turn from this 10 to 30 percent you also outperform company that has less than 10 percent or have uh, no woman executive so you can see actually gender diversity actually uh, really matters and help investor also and just now we talk about the uh, they and culture diversity so top company also outperform those that are in the bottom by 36 percent also so you can see actually all this diversity really help company because of a wider view and also wider pool of talents however they also conclude that we are always talk about diverse uh, in diversity and they conclude that based on the u.s data when they start looking at all this study in 2014 in u.s and uh, uk right actually the female representative on executive have raised from around 15 to 20 percent but it's still very slow so you can see Although we will talk about all this impact, but come a lot of companies are still not really taking an action on all this gender diversity. So you can see actually there's still widely a male representative on the executive team. So, uh, so MSCI, right, just now you also talk about actually uh, how firm with more women on board and also stronger human capital policy, right, actually show higher productivity growth. So I say that talent leadership with a persistent critical mass of female right, has a higher growth in uh, employee in productivity in their industry as compared to any other group. So just now you mentioned, if you look at the two examples, uh, Lucy Peng and also about uh, Mary. So all this actually, they work at human resources also when they, in, during their, I'll say that in the early of their career. So you can see actually these two companies are also doing very well because of the gender diversity and also their talent pool leadership. And SMP Global Study, right? We also did a study. Firm with actually female CFO are more profitable and generate excess profit of 1.8 trillion over the study horizon. And firm with actually CEO, female CEO, and CFO right, have actually produced superior stock performer as compared to market average. So it's actually another interesting is that they have actually helped to provide another view and some of these female CEO and CFO right, they actually outperform as compared to their male counterparts. So their article is quite interesting, you can read up more. So in the 24 month post appointment, a female CEO see, saw around 20% increase in their stock price momentum CFO around 6% in the profitability and also 8% in the large stock return. So firm with actually, uh, I would say that wider or higher gender diversity on the board are more profitable as larger as compared to firm with actually lower diversity. So this one is really uh, quite interesting. So you see that actually gender diversity with all these different studies really make a difference, but we still do not see this actually practice in the uh, whole, I would say, in the business. So uh, coming back to ESG, so we talk about actually Biden, because we've um, changed our president. Previously, Trump pulled out the uh, Paris Agreement, but Biden actually come back to, so for them, there's actually some reverse of this administration policy. So all this will also affect uh, ESG investing. So actually for Biden, right, he's going to reach, uh, intending to actually rejoin the Paris Agreement. So this will actually affect companies in US that who are not really going uh, with the agreement because they have actually quite a lot of control in terms of the releasing of this harmful gas into the industry. And also he's pushing for clean and renewable energy. You can see uh, like he want to have a carbon pollution free sector power sector by 2035, you know, it's going to push for EV car, also clean infrastructure. And recently, you can see actually with the new uh, security exchange commissioner, right, it has actually required company, uh, public company to disclose their climate change related financial risk and also greenhouse emission in the operation. So you can see uh, it's already starting to do things. So company wise, they have to actually take uh, measures to control in terms of the to match with all these uh, greenhouse emission. Also, he's going to choose a new head to the uh, CFTC, Community Future Trading Commission, 
and they also have a many mandate to increase the focus on climate risk management. You can see actually, uh, with a, I'll say that is all these ESG factors going in and also government going to push, right? You can see actually the importance of ESG investing. So companies who are not going to follow uh, so-called some of these climate changes or ESG, right? They'll actually slap with a heavy fine. And also we can see actually the benefit of this ESG, like we talk about gender diversity. We talk about actually other effects. They can actually help the company also become more profitable. So lastly, we'll talk about some ETF. So first of all, we'll introduce this UM ETF. So it's actually a quite interesting ETF. So it's actually helped to track the Morningstar Women Empowerment Index, which helped to offer, a, offer diversity exposure to large and mid, mid cap of US company that has embraced strong gender diversity practice and equal opportunity. So issue of this ETF right, is actually impact shares. It's actually a bad Form, right, they help non-profit organizations to translate their social value into investment product to be traded on uh, NASDAQ, uh, the NYSE. Uh, sorry, not NASDAQ, NYSE. So what they do is they help to uh, compile this product into an ETF. Actually, they don't donate all this uh, net profit, advisory profit from the management of this ETF to the YWCA. So it's actually a movement form in one, 1858 to actually advocate a uh, woman and also other social costs. So you can see actually, if you're investing to this ETF, actually the net advisory profit is going back for a, root, a good root cost. And next thing, let us take a, so -called, uh, a look at their performance. So actually you can see uh, if you compare to MSCI US, uh, uh, the US investable market index, right? Uh, for the past one year, you actually have around 31.85%. If you actually look in the focus on company that have actually in match with the uh, gender diversity, right? can see actually the outperform wise, right? Has outperformed by 49% of around 40% if you're talking about NAV. So you can see that actually this uh, ETF already outperform as compared to the US index because of the... So just now you mentioned that study already shown with a wider, I'll say that with a gender diversity, company are more profitable. So for this company, they actually do selection, right? They actually really outperform the markets. So I'll say that this ETF is pretty quite new, so you can take a look. Uh, so just now it's actually, uh, there's another morning, because it's morning study, actually do develop market ex Japan gender diversity index. So they actually focus on company with exposure to exhibition uh, strong gender diversity policy and practice. So they focus on a few different factors we are doing. So four different category as a screening criteria to award company. So it's, I'll say that as an individual investor, wow, got so many different factors. And for now we have talk about actually board of director, senior management, all this. I also talk about actually living wages and gender pay gap or this it's very hard for us to do so one thing is that for investors who want to uh, buy into this etf sometimes another way you can pay is you look to in this index you see what company are there then from there you can select company that you are uh, have a belief and invest in that so just a highlight of the list of company they do like for example microsoft apple they actually practice quite a lot in terms of the gender diversity so they actually some of their top ranking holdings. So you actually can go to this uh, website to get uh, details on where you, uh, what company are actually practicing gender diversity. Then you can see actually they have all these company, they really did a study. So what you can do, you can tap onto the uh, list of holdings in this index. From there, you can actually see select company to invest also. <clears throat> so lastly, we'll talk about some of these ETF ESG team ETF that you can invest. <clears throat> First one is actually the iShare MSCI KLD 400 social ETF. So what they do is actually they trade a market weight of 400 US company that deem to have positive uh, env environment and social and governance characteristic by the MSCI. So the code is, so all these are the code that you can look out for. 
Then there's also the Vanguard uh, SGUS stock ETF. They help to track our market way of this US all cap uh, screen by uh, for ESG criteria. Then there's the iShare ESG Awareness MCI. So you can see just now we also talk about institution are growing slowly into uh, really is intending to go or going in slowly into ESG. So you can see all this ESG, uh, the company that make all this ESG criteria will also expect to also uh, see their growth over time because of the investment of institute. So retail, as a, us as a retail, we actually can ride along with this ESG team. So next we also have a SPDR, also Gender Diversity Index, is called SHE, quite interesting. It's also a um, US large, my, uh, large cap company with a relative high proportion of women in executive and director position. Because just now we see that women who are company SMP, they show that a study they showed that actually women who are in the CEO or CF right actually have uh, I would say they help the company to perform do a financial outperformance also. So this index will be also ETF will also be quite interesting. Then just for uh, into other EA, uh, ESG team like for example Invesco Solar Energy, they focus on solar companies. And also we have the uh SP uh fossil fewer reserve free ETF. So they want to focus on all the S&P 500 companies that actually exclude uh, company with actually known fossil fuel reserve, means that they're mainly dealing with all this uh, oil and petroleum industry. They remove all these company and they focus on company that are not doing this. It also has about iShare MSCI, US ESG selected ETF. They also focus company on ESG. So these are the ETF focusing on ESG that you can keep a lookout for. Uh, just some of our promotion that we have launched. So we, uh, later I'll come go back to some of these example that you can see. So for example, we talk about recently we talk have a new product on oil. So if in case you are interested in trading oil, you can take a look. And also we have promotion into the Hong Kong index CFD. They reduce a contract from the standard contract to a minimum contract of one. So actually for us, uh, through this webinar, we actually wish to everyone to, especially all the women, uh, happy International Women Day. And for guys-wise, you can actually do our parts by helping out, uh, whether, regardless whether is it our wife or her siblings or is it our mom or this, uh, in terms of their work also with a gender diversity. So maybe I go into some example. So uh, some example, like for example, just now we talk about Capital Land, they actually really start to focus on ESG, although we may not actually really uh, take note. So we can see actually we place uh, sustainability. They, what they do is actually they do a master plan, out plan. Like for example, they start their sustainability journey in the 2000, what they actually hope to achieve, right? They really... Uh, listed down their ESG planning over here. So it's actually quite a lot interesting, right? Is that a lot of companies has been actually uh good companies already has been actually practices ESG. And although we cannot really see uh the short term uh how they actually outperform, but long term wise you will able to see what is their policy impact and also sustainability. Also another thing is actually uh for one of these uh ETF, right? Actually, they also found it was one of the founding principles for this. Maybe I can share all this detail. Can all, if you're interested, can read up. So, for them, they actually, as an ETF product provider, they actually been focusing a lot into ESG investing because ESG investing traditionally, most people will think that it's actually a low return. But in case a company, let's say, just like we mentioned, if they do not practice some of this control, right? End up they have actually like oil spillage like BB or this right can actually have a devastating uh, fine being imposed on them. So we believe what they are believe for this you can see some of their uh, discussion. Maybe I just share some of this link uh, on some of this article where you all can read up. So in case you have anyone have any question right you can uh, feel free to ask inside the Q&A portion. 
So these are some of the articles that right? they actually did a really did a good study and it is really quite interesting. So you'll see how gender diversity really matters. Okay, actually I'm coming towards the end of the webinar. Here is the disclaimer. And in case you have uh, any question, I can feel free to approach me uh, by calling this number 6812155 or uh, email to us. So coming to the Q&A portion, I think there's, I'll say that today there's a uh, very little question being asked. Like I'll say that for ESG team, right? Is, maybe it's in Singapore, wise, I think ESG and also gender diversity may not be so well known, but in over, it's a, I would say that it's quite interesting to try out this and actually I've tried to promote a, a good cause also. So anyone have any question before I actually went off this webinar? So this is the first ETF that actually we sh shared just now. So you can see actually how they actually... Okay, that previously I actually get the detail from here, but actually now they uh, have some issue, uh, I think believe. So actually maybe I'll go back to my slide better because previously I get from here. Uh, previously, I get from here what they did a comparison in terms of this, uh, yes, uh, this woman gender diversity returns as compared in the past one year. What's the return as compared to the uh, MSCI US Investable Market Index? So you can see actually from here, right? You can see actually this one of the ESG gender diversity ETF, right? Actually outperform as compared to MSCI US Investable. Uh, investable market index already. So return wise, actually, they will, I'll say that uh, they also see the market and in case of this, right, they tend to actually outperform, but all this will have to see what the companies that actually do selection. So I can't really tell you whether it's 100% they are going to outperform, but on a, so a trend rise, you can see actually the study wise, right, with gender diversity, they tend to outperform. From here, you can see it. And the diversity, all these actually they tend to outperform, but in terms of to possible return, I can't give you a definite answer on that. Then ESG, let me see whether any other ESG, we see whether they actually show all this performance wise. Because ESG, I would say that it's still quite a new theme. Maybe see another one. They actually they show the performance of this. So this one is another ESG 
an ETF. Okay, somehow I think the data today on this ETF website, right, they didn't show out the MSCI World EX USD uh, index. So I'm not sure why uh, what happened to the website. Let me see whether I can get from other places. Let me see whether it's shown over. So these are the two websites actually you usually use to see. Okay. For them, I think also have some issue. Okay, today wise, I'm not sure why this one doesn't show up. So actually previously I checked, right? Actually some of these uh, ATF, right? They actually tend to outperform as compared to the index. They actually did a comparison and they are trying to track. But now I'm not sure what happened at this ETF website. So they are not able to show the ratings and the performance. Okay, uh, any other question? So, uh, so some of this ETF, maybe subsequently when, uh, maybe a few days later, you can use to check on all this, uh, take down some of this counter code. From there, you can see whether actually they actually do a comparison back up or maybe later in the day, you can do a comparison. Actually, we see actually all this where they tend to outperform as compared to the index they are actually tracking. Uh, let me know anyone have any other question. So actually, uh, so in case you are interested to find out, like for example, I'm interested in this uh, code, SHE. So how do I search for this ETF? I just key in SHE. Okay, sometimes uh, they may not be easy, so I'll key in the uh, I share yes key. I share. Okay, maybe. So I can make use of advanced function. Okay. And from there, you can actually help me to screen out this ETF. So actually, using all this, right, you select the ETF, you key in the code. For example, I'm interested in this. Then you actually help me to uh, do screening of this ETF out. So I'm, uh, I'm not sure anyone have any other question. Uh, we can also discuss any question out of this ESG also. So uh, maybe just to highlight uh, what is hap actually happened in the market. So I think everyone has, you can see actually market start to sell down recently. So we can, uh, we talk about actually the yield of this uh, bond yield has been actually increasing. So you can see actually they did a uh, sell down. So why actually there's a market sell down? So it's actually because when the uh, expectation is that future borrowing cost is going to up. So company wise will actually have a debt huge debt, but they'll be actually facing with a higher interest uh, expenses. So in that case, right, actually this company wise, interest expenses will actually re reduce the profitability of the company. So end up this company who has actually tend to have higher debts, right, they also have been uh, will face sell down because of higher expenses. Uh, and also one thing is that would this actually lead to another uh, bear market? I think currently it's still unlikely we'll continue monitor. However, in case uh, the interest rate continue to go up significantly, then this one can actually cause uh, more further panic in the overall market. 
So actually, especially in the tech stock, because tech stock has been growing over, I would say, especially over the past one year plus since COVID nineteen, we have a lot of focus. So I think is that the sell down of tech stock right can also lead to sector rotation because you can see other some of these other sector wise when economy start to actually op open up and also maybe possible uh tourism travel in the future. Right? So actually, there's also a rotation of the funds from the tech store into other some of these tourism sectors so this is actually what is happening in the market so first of all you can see it sell down because of uh, interest finance uh the interest expenses next thing is actually sector rotation so you can see actually when uh one of the study you want to do a lot to find out about sector rotation uh, uh sector rotation study right you can see look for uh, this fidelity sector rotation right they actually did a lot of sector rotation study what's happening in the early stage mid stage late stage and recession so they actually did a study on all these different business sector rotation it's quite interesting to find out more and also where you want to position in different stage of the business cycle where you want to put your funds in so this is another interesting rotation study that you can actually so I think if there's no further question within the next few minutes, maybe we're actually uh, going to end this webinar soon. And thanks for joining. I'll uh, hold on for another few minutes, see whether anyone have any other question. Okay, someone has actually asked another question. Why, uh, why USD went up? So one thing is that you can see actually the uh, yield of this US uh, start to go up. So when you see, uh, okay, when you are investing, you see which one actually, so sometimes you also see which one actually gave you the better returns. So in case USD, the expectation of this return is going up, what you will do? people will actually start to invest back, uh, focus on dollars, buy up dollars because of uh, increasing uh, interest rate. Because when they say that uh, all this uh, future inflation is going to increase, USD is will, the EU will also start to increase to manage the inflation. So actually, that's why people, uh, funds are actually going back into the USD. So that's why actually USD went up. So is that you can see it when you're investing in different currency, right? Uh, you also take note of oh, which currency also give you a better return, same as actually stock. So especially for institute, right? They also look at all these funds. So when they see USD expansion go up, they'll invest into the USD. And when USD dollars go up, indirectly of course cause sell down in all these uh, different uh, stock also as the business uh, rotation of the opening of economy. So all these factors are also a bit interrelated. Uh, any other question? Uh, someone is asking about SLV ratio. Uh, are you referring to silver, gold, silver ratio? Uh, maybe you want to clarify about SLV ratio. Are you referring to the gold silver ratio?
Okay, maybe I think I, I just try to interpret your question. So if you're asking about uh, silver, maybe you're asking about silver and gold. So one thing is that uh, gold and silver is so-called, uh, I would say that inverse correlation, so-called have an inverse correlation as compared to USD. So when USD is weakened, the price of gold and silver will actually increase. However, when gold, USD is increasing, wise, right? this one actually indirectly affect the gold and silver price. So that's why you can see actually gold and silver price can actually fall. However, it's not 100% correlated uh, because sometimes you also see other factors like, for example, gold and silver, right, they also uh, so-called uh, hedge again any uncertainties. So like, for example, there's uh, economic crisis or there's actually, say there's a tourism attack or this gold silver price can actually uh, spike up. So I'm not sure whether I interpret your question correctly about the gold silver. Okay, someone's actually asked about the liquidity of the funds. So maybe you just go back to the uh, funds. So actually when you look at liquidity, so uh, let me see where is it. Can see actually from here over here, you can see actually the daily uh, volume and what is actually the average spread. Maybe what uh, one of comparison people want to always compare is I'm gonna open up another one. People always like to compare with one of the uh, largest ETF. So S and P. So liquidity wise, uh, I'll say that this is one of the largest liquidity. So you can see this one. Uh, definitely this one for ESG investing wise, they may not be uh, so called well known. Uh, for retail investor at this stage, so you can see actually the volume wise is actually there's quite a lot of significant difference, and the spread also. Yeah, so for all this liquidity of this ESG, because for ESG team is still pretty much a new team as compared to the traditional uh, tracking market S&P. So you can see actually in terms of volume and the spread, you can see there's a difference. Now let me know if any other question before I actually end off this webinar. I'll feel be feel free to you can ask any other any other question out of ESG also. I'm okay with that. Yes, the, this webinar wise uh, will be actually recorded on YouTube. I think uh, my colleague will help me subsequently you know, do uh, some editing of the voice of this uh, and also after that it's put onto the YouTube. So if you want to see where our past recording uh, wise. And come over here, Philip Capital. So there's a lot, uh, past webinar will be actually post on here. And also like for example, my past webinar about reads or this yeah, have actually post over here. Or another place that can actually find is actually clips. And then over here you can see some of the past webinar being post over here. Welcome. Uh, okay, maybe uh, you if you all are interested in any other topic, right? You can actually uh, subsequent when you close this, uh, right? There'll be feedback from you just list what is the kind of topic that you're interested in, then from there we'll actually try to plan topic according uh to uh, of your client interest. So I think uh for next week wise, there'll be actually uh because of our launch our new product, there'll be a 
uh, upcoming webinar on the uh, oil, so you can keep a lookout for that. I think if there's no further question, uh, thanks for joining. I hope you all enjoy your night. And also to all the women, right? Uh, happy International Women's Day. Thank you.